Hi everyone in English 1301, it's Dr. E and I'm here with a video that's going to uh, walk through the guidelines and expectations for our revised response assignment. So the first thing to note really is our goal. So what you'll be doing and the purpose of this, you know, is to go back to something that you've written previously to revise it, to um, rework it if you need to, and then to add to it, include some research, do some of that kind of um, of work, but it's it's adding to something that you've done previously, okay? So this is really hitting on the idea in composition studies that revision is just so important and something that we really need to integrate into our writing process. Um, so we're doing that as part of our grade here. So uh, I do want to um, make sure that you're thinking about, do I need to reconsider those ideas? And you'll probably need to add more information. In fact, you will have to add more information. Um, the question of, isn't this plagiarism? In many, in all college classes actually, uh, reusing your work is considered plagiarism. Um, you can plagiarize yourself, right? <laughs> it just seems so wacky and unfair, but it's true. Uh, you can't resubmit the same work in a single class or from one class to the other. Um, it's just part of what plagiarism entails. Uh, but of course I'm giving you permission to do that because our purpose here is really to think about that process of revision, going back to reflect, you know, upon our you know, our ideas, our writing approach, everything to engage with others. If you choose to do some peer reviewing, um, some tutoring sessions, remember we have Dr. K here helping us that kind of thing. Uh, for the future, this collection, this this response pushes you to utilize strategies that, you know, we want to utilize in our writing, including the revision and review. Um, we just don't see errors in our own writing. We all do this. I do this quite a bit. I have writing habits and I won't notice in my own revision process, I won't notice those things that I'm doing that I shouldn't, uh, which is why I have people that I go to that I ask for their input, that kind of thing. Um, people in different jobs that I, you know, I know in business environments, entrepreneurial positions, education, they won't even send an email to colleagues or bosses without revising or even sharing with coworkers. So it's something where the sooner you make that part of your practice, the better off you're going to be just in general. All right, uh, are there new things to write? Yes, you're going to create uh, what's called an abstract paragraph. I'll get into that in a second. Um, you're also going to need a total of four to five paragraphs. Uh, so we're taking something we wrote previously and we'll have to add to it because our previous written response assignments have not been asking for that length, but this, again, we're pushing, we're adding to. And then of course you need to create a works cited page uh, that includes any sources you reference. All right, I really want you to keep in mind that you've create you've completed some of this work already. So sometimes people see, oh, this big assignment, it's worth a lot of points, um, and it tends to raise our blood pressure, but I really want you to keep in mind that you've done some of this already. Some of it is already, you know, taken care of, and you're just kind of working on what you've already done and adding to those ideas. Uh, I want you to use the template. Can't stress that enough. I still am seeing things that are submitted without using the template and that's a little frustrating. So just go ahead and do that. Remember the Purdue OWL website is an awesome source for MLA assistance. There are example works cited and text citations. There's also a whole module with examples and information. So make sure that you're looking at the resources in our own course area. All right, so before your revised response, and I want to note that this is going to be your first written response. So remember way back, which for us is only a few weeks ago, uh, you wrote your, um, your pretty much your writing history or your writing autobiography. That's the response we're going back to and adding some details, information, and research, okay? You'll want to include before this the abstract paragraph, and this is going to be in italics. The abstract is something that helps your audience in terms of uh, providing some context. So it's something that they will read. So you can think of me sitting there reading your work or anybody in kind of a general audience 
you're giving us some background information. What steps did you take in the revision process? Was it a difficult thing to do to add research? Or, you know, you're giving us kind of a play-by-play -play of your own experience before we see your revised work, okay? All right, so the collection will include your first written response, okay? Uh, the revised work needs to be four to five paragraphs. So for some of you, it's maybe adding one paragraph, some of you maybe two, uh, three, but I don't want it to be much longer. Part of this is some of you struggle with pushing to the, the required length and some of you struggle with shortening to the required length. And so academic writing is about kind of um, tinkering as well as adjusting, you know, what is the most, what are the most important details? What do I need to include or do I need more to add to meet this um, kind of length expectations. Uh, it's about kind of tempering what we write, right? You also need to utilize two sources. So think about all the things that we've read related to writing. I really suggest you go back and use Irvin because why not? Irvin was kind of the source for the first uh, written response anyway that we were thinking about those writing myths. Um, and then we have, of course, everything we've read in our textbook. The assignment features that abstract paragraph in italics. Um, and that's going to appear at the beginning of the submission. So I encourage you in that abstract to add the first person, um, you know, what did you originally think of this topic? So this is just going into more detail about that abstract paragraph. You need to include two sources. Um, it needs to be from our assigned readings. And so I want you to think about at least one quote that is working to support your ideas in every paragraph. I'm going to stop and really emphasize the fact that when we're using research in academic writing, we're not writing to that research. So what I mean here is that you should essentially be able to write any work in academia and then go back and add research to support your ideas. The research isn't, unless that is the very specific kind of expectation for assignment, if you're doing kind of like a, a reading review or something. So a lot of times people tend to lean on quotes to start their paragraphs. This, that's not what we're doing. You start with your own topic sentence, uh, and then the quotes are supporting whatever ideas that you are going into in that particular topic for that particular paragraph, okay? So make sure you're really considering how sources need to be used in academic writing. Uh, we're not writing towards those sources. Those sources are actually supporting our ideas. We're the authors in this case. You want your assignment to follow MLA guidelines. Um, again, using the template really helps with this. You need to include a works cited page, um, and that's going to come at the very end as uh, in MLA formatting, that's what's required. Um, and again, links, okay? The collection needs to be submitted in the proper format. And I said, you know, please consider a tutoring appointment. We have Dr. K here to help us. Um, you can click this link, set up an appointment, or Dr. K has left their information uh, in that module in D2L. So please take advantage. We have great assistance here for us. Okay. So you're doing this now, <laughs> the instructional video. Uh, and so here is just kind of a pretty straightforward rubric in terms of what, uh, what the, the categories, right? What the guidelines are in terms of what I'll be looking for as I grade your work, right? So make sure that you have those sources, the work cited, the, you know, all of that good stuff, okay? I'm gonna scroll up and what I'm gonna do is pause real quick and I'm going to uh, open the template so you can see that. So this is the template that you can use. And I do want to point out that if you go to D2L, um, if you want to download something, and this is very misleading, right? This is not what a template or uh, what MLA formatting should actually look like. Remember that you need to drop down uh, and then you can click download. So make sure that you have uh, utilized your free student version of the Microsoft Office Suite just to make that a little bit more uh, pain free. All right, so this is MLA, this is boring, right? We've talked about this before. So, you know, enter your name, the due date, double click up here for your last name. And then I've put little notes here. So your abstract paragraph is going to go here. Um, see how it's in italics? Okay, so review the guidelines. And then I put, you know, this is where your first revised response goes. Um, and so this is where you can essentially paste what you submitted previously 
and then go in and use this document to edit, to update, to do all the things you need to do, add those paragraphs that are required, okay, um, and make those uh, changes. So make sure that you're, of course, uh, looking at your work with fresh eyes, looking at any feedback that I've provided, that kind of thing. Uh, remember that on the last page, on its own, you'll have your work cited, right? So sometimes I'll get work cited and they'll look like this. They'll be, you know, at the end of a page. That's, that's not MLA, right? MLA is very specific. You want that work cited, that title, to appear at the very top, centered on the next page. And it's a little backwards in terms of indentations. This is what's called a hanging indent. Uh, it's indented five, it's indented five um, inches. This is, again, MLA, very specific. Um, and so what you can do is if you, um, you can always copy and paste. I'm just saying that might be something super helpful, right? Um, but you can right click, go to paragraph, and when that's open, this is where you would select hanging, okay? Yeah, I know, it's it's overly complicated in some ways, but no, there's a method. If you've watched the MLA video, you know, I talk about there's a method to some of these rules and guidelines for MLA, and that's so the, the last names stick out, so that if I'm looking at your research, I'm reading your ideas and the paragraphs, and I wanna double check something, I can jump down to the works cited and easily locate uh, the the um, the citation that I'm talking about. So I mean, and this is something that's helpful when you have pages and pages of sources, right? So a book, you know, you having that last name is really helpful. If we're only using a couple of uh, citations or sources, it doesn't seem as necessary. Although, of course, we're following MLA guidelines, but that's just to give you kind of an idea of why uh, why we do that. All right, so again, this is the template. Please go ahead and use it. And you are always welcome to post in the Q&A discussion post area. Um, and you can email me if there's something a little bit more personal or specific that you'd like to address. But remember in the Q&A area, you can post anonymously as well. So take your pick. All right, y'all, so good luck with this. I do not foresee that this is something that should be overly stressful, even though it, you know, it looms as this large assignment. It's, you've done, the most painful part, which is getting your initial ideas down. So just add to those. Um, you can add more about your writing history or you can transition to, okay, that was my writing history. This is my writing present, you know, or what I want for my writing future. So you can go in all different kinds of directions as long as you're meeting those requirements and you're thinking about your own writing and yourself as a writer. All right, good luck.